the PAT consists of six types of perceptual ability questions. There's keyhole problems, where you're given an object and then must choose an aperture or opening that the object could pass through and fit perfectly. So you choose from the five options that you're given which aperture would fit the object best. In the case of this problem, for example, choice D matches the side-to-side -side view of this object. They have edges that are angled similarly and are the same length as the edges on the object. Then we have top front end problems. With these, you're given two views of an object, and then you have to pick the correct third view from the four options that you're given. And the three views possible are the top view, the front view, or the end view, which is side to side. Visible edges in top front end problems are depicted as solid lines, and edges that are obscured from view are depicted as dotted lines. So in this problem, we're given the top view and the front view and have to find the end view. Choice D is the best match since it has that projection that's in the front view and you can see it sticking out in the top view as well as the hole that we can see going through the object in the top view. Next are angle ranking problems. For angle ranking problems, you're given four angles and you have to order them from smallest to largest. You're only given four options for combinations, which is helpful, but picking the right one can still be very tricky. For this one, two and four look like the smallest angles, one and three look like the largest, so that already narrows things down. And looking a little closer, we can see that the answer is choice B, which has angle four as the smallest angle and angle three as the largest. The next set of problems are hole punching problems. In these, you're shown a piece of paper and then a series of folds that the paper goes through before having one or more holes punched through it. Your goal is to choose which pattern of holes would result in the paper after it's then unfolded. In this case, we can follow the hole as it unfolds and is duplicated across each fold until we end up with a pattern that matches choice D. Then there's cube counting problems. In cube counting problems, you're given a structure made of individual cubes, and you're asked how many cubes have a certain number of their sides exposed, and you're given a range of five options. In this case, we're asked how many cubes have four sides exposed, and we can see here that the answer is five, and that even if a cube has a side that's hidden from you, if it's an exposed side, it's still counted. And finally, pattern folding problems. In pattern folding problems, you're given a flat shape and asked that if this flat shape were folded up into a 3D object, what would that object look like? In this case, we have this flat pattern shape with triangles and rectangles, and we're asked which triangular prism it can make. In this case, that would be choice A, since the position of the shaded triangular faces in relation to the shaded rectangular face match what's shown in the flattened map. If you go to eruditionprep.com slash PAT, you can find this more basic information about the six problem types here on this page, as well as some simple example problems, and then more detailed information on each problem type if you click on their link. That will take you to an overview of the rules, as well as some tips and an example problem. Our YouTube videos cover more of the basics of these problems, but we recommend accessing all of our PAT tutorials and our question banks on our PAT course. Find out more at eruditionprep.com. And good luck with your DAT prep.